new film breakdown today and this one's a big one new nebraska wide receiver transfer jamal banks we're going to be looking over his film from wake forest and go over the bad the good but most importantly the things that we are super excited to see next year as nebraska Cornhusker. so without further ado if you like the content please hit the like button on this video along with subscribing to the channel we've had 25 straight days of husker content we're just getting started folks so if you like the film breakdowns the instant analysis and everything else in between Please hit that subscribe button, but let's get into Jamal Banks. All right, here it is. If you're not familiar with the formatting, we're actually doing it a little bit differently today. We're going to start off with purely his film, rep by rep, and this will show you the good and the bad, and then we'll go to his junior year highlights. But let's start this one off. And by the way, we were watching this a little bit slowed down just so we can watch the entire rep uh, to completion. So first play, a little curl route, came back, contested catch. You're going to see a lot of that. Against a really good defense, by the way, in Clemson. Fade ball, the end zone. Oh, does not come down with it. We'll give that a second look here real quick. Not the best ball in the world. Again, 21 yards out. Just a touch overthrown. There's a lot of hand fighting go going on. That's a good no call, but yeah, a little overthrown. And I'm a proponent of saying if Jamal Banks had better quarterback play this year with Wake Forest, he probably wouldn't have even transferred to Nebraska. He probably would have entered the NFL draft. So to that, we're probably grateful. But, yeah, that was not a great throw. Pockets collapsing. Jamal Banks is basically scrambling, trying to get open around the sideline. And they get it to him. Nice. It's a little check down. Hate this play concept. I hate when teams do that. Another player just kind of just throw it up to Jamal. Okay, we'll speed this up a little bit. It's going a little too slow. There we go. Oh, hold on. Hold up. There we go. So a little comeback. Same deal we saw earlier. One thing I'm also trying to see in this film is what he does after the catch. We saw a lot of current Nebraska commits, Davon Hall, Isaiah McMorris, Ja'Cory Barney, um, even Billy Kemp from last year. These are guys who are electric after they catch the football. What can Jamal Banks do uh, once he possesses it? And we know Isaiah Nayer can as well. So another poor ball here. Again, comeback route. You just throw it up to him. And it's just that was great coverage. That was great coverage. I'll give I'll give Clemson a lot of credit there. Same deal, another little comeback. Again, Jamal Banks is beating man coverage about every single time though on those little curl routes. Um, so that's a that's a good good sign. You get same deal there. A lot of check downs. So that was against Clemson. He had a big game against Clemson. So this is an interesting little package they put him on here. You have him basically going on a fake jet sweep all the way around the line, basically on a sweep. And again, another check down. That's an interesting usage of the 6'4 receiver. Get another little another comeback. But one thing that you're going to see here is that Jamal Banks was by far Wake Forest's best receiver this year. So they just wanted to get him the ball no matter what. And they'll do whatever it takes. Remember when we had Wandell Robinson? We had him playing wide receiver X. Why was that? Well, we just wanted to get him the ball no matter what. Even though that wasn't his true position. He was a slot receiver. Um, but we just felt, hey, he can play any position because we need to get the ball in his hands. So same deal here with Wake Forest. Uh, with kind of a different build of receiver, clearly. But yeah, one thing I'm already saying is there's, again, a lot of dink and dunk passes to him. Not a lot of long developing plays. Again, right there's another comeback route in zone coverage. Nice job to beat that, though. Cover two. Get another check down. Not too, I will say this. Early on, you can already tell in this film he's not too shifty once he has the possession of the ball. Again, tries to make a move there, instantly gets brought down. And that's not really a con on him. Again, he's 6'4". There's not many guys moving like that 6'4 to make a juke move and keep going, right? Uh, but just something to note. 
Get another nice comeback route in man coverage. This whoop. Give that second look right there. Again, great footwork for his frame. Whoop. Honestly, yeah, a little hand fight. That's a good no call, though. This is a this is a dot, by the way. This is a dot by the quarterback. Get watch him downfield. He's going on a deep in route. Yep. Good catch. So, yeah, again, early on, I'm just seeing Wake Forest trying to get him involved. They're not putting him in many complex um, routes. They're not really giving him an opportunity to go up for those jump balls. Again, we'll see that probably later in his film, but it's just a bunch of dink and dunk passes trying to get to their best player. And I think part of it, they don't really trust their quarterback's arm. Nice play along the sideline. Wow. This is what I was waiting for. This is the last clip here on this first video we're going to be looking over. We'll give that a second look. But basically, this ball led him back to the sideline. He was falling down, had that hand-eye coordination to go down with it and get in bounce. Watch the feet. Beautiful job to get that leg down, get that knee down. So that was the first film breakdown. That was the first video I have. Let's get to the second. All right, let's get to the second part of this film. And we'll go back to being a little more slow because these clips go very quick. So first one. Another comeback route. Again, one thing I've already picked up on, not really super impressed with the route tree, but man, he beats man coverage consistently on those comebacks, those little curl routes, those check downs every single time. And same deal there, just finds a gap in the zone coverage. Makes a little nice run after the catch. You uh, terrible ball by the quarterback. So basically, man coverage again here. Quarterback's eyeing him down. You need to throw this ball sooner if you're the quarterback. He waited about two ticks too long, then fires it just completely inaccurate. Yeah, nothing Jamal Banks could have done there. That's a terrible rep by the quarterback. Again, same deal there. A little comeback. Good job to kind of spin off that and make play after the catch. But every time, you, you see what Wake Forest does with him. They put him on these fake fade routes where he's going to the outside. They think he's going to go deep. He just curls right back in. Every single rep. Every single rep. And I'm starting to believe that they just don't trust the quarterback's arm at this point. And we'll see if they do it again. Yep. Exact same deal. Exact same route. He catches it again. <laughs> oh, we're seeing something different here. Bomb it downfield. He has that speed. Is it a good throw? Got it. No, just drops right at the end. But that is clearly a PI. We'll give that a second look here, real quick. But nice job here to beat this man coverage. Again, he has some wheels on him, man. And you see right there, P.I. But he does a good job, despite the obvious P.I., get his hands on the ball, almost bring it down. That was a good ball by the quarterback, finally. Again, nice job here. Head fake, gone. And shouldn't be noted, he has about four inches of height on that cornerback right there and still outran him. Yeah, really good ball, though, by the quarterback. This was placed right where it needed to be. It's just yeah, a matter of look at Sims right there. Just hooked his right hand. Yep. Nothing you could do there as a receiver. Good effort, though. Really good effort. Same deal. Quick comeback route. Just goes out of bounds. Same deal, man. Again, it's so effective. I, I understand why they're going back to it. But from a film perspective, we want to see a little bit more. 
Nice little slant down the middle. Nice throw. No run after the catch. Nice job to break the tackle, get off it, try to make a play. So early on, and I'm going to save my full analysis to the end of the video as always, but I want to see Nebraska put them on some more complex route running, um, some more, a better route tree per se, because this is this kind of the type of stuff that Isaiah Nair needs to be doing or Jalen Lloyd. You should not be sending your big 6'4", 6'5", receiver on these little slant routes, right? That's not what needs to happen. This is just simply Wake Forest giving the ball to their best receiver every single rep. Finding a way to get him the ball. Again, same deal, man. A little crosser. Not sure what the camera is. Why didn't we didn't get a broadcast cam of this clip? He makes a great play to go down and get it. Not sure. Maybe this shows it. But let's go back to that real quick. Pocket collapse, good job by the quarterback. And just beats his man again on man coverage. He's a man coverage beater, man. Hand-eye coordination. This is underthrown football. He has to go back to this ball and go down and get it. Man, that was a great play. Great pitch and catch. Same deal. A little comeback route. Needs the first down. Looks like he's a bit short. Finally, fade to the end zone, goes up, gets it. There we go, folks. That is what we've been waiting to see. Give that a little second look here after this clip. All right, there we go. Again, you're working in man coverage. You underthrow this ball on purpose so it can work back to it. Goes up, gets it. Easy. Again, too easy, man. Good football here. Good throw. And has to go back to it. Nothing the cornerback can do when you're going up against a 6-4 six, four, six, four frame, man. Again, quick little comeback once again. You need a touchdown here, down 10. Looks like they end up getting it. Now you're driving. Touchdown, take the lead. Oh, my goodness. Another fade to the end zone. Goes back. Oh, that's a P.I. Did they throw the flag? Yep, looks like they did. Yep. We'll give that a second look here. And that's what's dangerous about the fade is that you underthrow that ball on purpose. So as a defending cornerback, you can't really do anything. You're kind of running into the receiver because the receiver runs into you. A lot of times it actually draws um, a defensive pass interference for better or worse. A lot of people want that rule to be changed. Uh, but that's what happens a lot A lot of times in these little fade routes is that because of that ball being underthrown, the cornerback runs into the wide receiver inadvertently, and you kind of draw it. Yeah, I again, as a, as a corner, there's not much you can do there. I would have preferred a no call, actually, but that was a good rep by him. All right, that was his film from his senior year. All right, let's start it off with the pros and the cons. And spoiler, there's not many cons. This guy's a complete stud. Yes, he's an NFL guy. I'll give you a quick comparison. Remember Omar Manning? We got him from Juco. Very hyped up player. This is what Omar Manning was supposed to be. A 6'4 demon in the past game. He can go up and get any 50-50 ball. Um, but one thing I was really impressed with was his route running ability to come back to that football. Beat man coverage consistently. He was even beating press coverage on goal routes. Beating cornerbacks who are probably a lot faster than he is uh, to go make a play on that football. Um, going to his hands. Probably one of the best hands we've seen from a Nebraska wide receiver in a very, very long time. The way he transitions his body to go back to the football, to, to completely swerve it in a 180 to keep his feet in balance, we saw it time and time again. So impressive by Jamal Banks. Um, again, there's not many things he does very bad. I will say this about Jamal Banks. The only con is that, yeah, he doesn't make a lot of plays after the catch. There's not much he can do, though. Again, you're 6'4", you're 220. That's a limitation of being that big is that, yeah, you're not going to pull off some crazy juke move uh, on an opposing cornerback on a screen, right? That's not going to happen. 
but that's not what we're looking for him to do either. He's our wide receiver X. He's going to make plays down the field when we need him to. We're going to throw out 50-50 balls to him in the end zone, and that's what you're going to see a lot of in 2024. So, man, really impressed by Jamal Banks. This is one of the better transfers in all of college football. I'd say he's a top 50 transfer, top 10 wide receiver. This guy's a complete stud. And I talked about it in my video about him originally. I was surprised he even entered the transfer portal. This guy had NFL written all over him. And the fact that Nebraska landed him is huge uh, for this upcoming year. Again, only one year of eligibility left. That's unfortunate, but we're excited to have him. So that was Jamal Banks. Let me know what you think of the video down below. Are you excited about this edition or any other thing you got from his film? Uh, but as always, folks, if you like the video, please hit like button along with subscribing to the channel. Uh, we are on the road to 2000, and we're hoping to hit it by February. But as always, folks, go be red, go Matt Rule, and see you next one.